This meeting is now being live streamed to Facebook's PPU, PPD Facebook group. Um, good evening, everybody. It is Tuesday, July 19th of 2022. And this is the day after we got home from Christmas Expo uh, down in, um, where were we? Biloxi, that's where we were. And um, well, we've got a, we, 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 we kind of had a little kind of, FUBAR about two weeks ago, uh, I kept saying to everybody, hey, we're going to do a webinar on, uh, let's do something on the uh, um, the state's effect. Let's do it next week. Well, next week ended up being the day that Robert and I were leaving for uh, Christmas Expo and traveling. So that was, uh, it didn't work out very, very well. Um, in fact, we didn't have a webinar at all last week because we were driving 16 hours down there. So I figure, well, let's make it up this week and we'll, we'll kind of uh, pull things together and make it work for this week. And I think uh, I was able to put something together. Uh, I, I, I didn't, uh, I, I tried not to go overboard, but um, I, it was important to kind of get the basics together to do something for you guys today. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get started. I think uh, everything's rolling. Let me see if I've got Facebook up here. Facebook. Rob, did you um, share that to the PPU group? Yes, Master. You're the man. You are the man. Okay, so. With that, we're going to go ahead and get started now that I see uh, we're kind of everything's kind of working through here, getting going. And uh, welcome, everybody, to July's first webinar. Well, no, maybe it's the second one. I can't remember. It's been a busy month. Uh, but in any event, we've got a, a, a nice little webinar series that, that I've come up, I, I've kind of put together uh, on the x Light States effect. And uh, I, I think that... Um, uh, I don't think I've ever done any classes on the state's effect. I had the chance to use it um, throughout the season last fall and doing a number of uh, interesting, simple things that otherwise used to be much more um, detailed, maybe even frustrating, uh, because there were so many things that were entailed with setting certain things up. And uh, if you use a number of different props that utilize or have the ability to utilize states, you'll find that this uh, kind of lesson is, is something that might be, might be uh, useful to you. Uh, we're also going to get into some other things, but uh, uh, tonight uh, I have a couple goals set up for tonight. Uh, we have, um, we're going to go through the states model dialog box, which is in the layout tab. Uh, we're going to review the states effects options. Um, we're going to actually do a number of demos and X lights using the effect. Um, and then we're going to review some of the basics of this, this state's effects. This is not going to be like a deep dive. You're gonna learn everything tonight about the state's effect because there's so much to learn about it um, that we're, it, it really is, uh, it really is interesting because the more you use the state's effect, the more you find uses for the state's effect. And uh, so we're gonna we're we're gonna also have a, a, another a guest with us tonight, Jackie Elliott from EFL Designs. He's uh, he's he, he's produced a number of props that are um, uh, that really do a lot of interesting things, and it relies on understanding what the state's effect does. So he's gonna get a little bit more into some of the advanced features that he utilizes for his uh, props that have those features built into them. So with that we're going to go ahead and get started. So uh, the state's effect has been added into X lights and it was added in, I believe by Keith. I, I, I don't remember offhand now, but I know it was added in, in 2016.39 of uh, the X lights that we're using today. Now uh, from 2016 through 2021, I really didn't mess with it. I, I hardly in, hardly ever uh, would have considered needing to use it for, for anything because I found what I needed to do uh, for most everything pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, 
though, as things got a little bit more complicated, uh, I, I realized that the state's effect was going to help not only me, but I'm sure you guys as well, who kind of have these same issues that you're challenged with, uh, this might help you as well. So uh, some notes on the state effect. Um, all models can uh, have a state set inside them and created for them. So it, it's very, very much uh, relies on the model being prepared. In other words, you have to take the time to do the work in the background in order to make the state's effect useful whenever you go to sequence with it. Um, the state effect turns on specific nodes or uh, node groups, not uh, in groups, I use that term loosely because, uh, and I'll get more into that specifically as we go on to those settings. The state effect relies on timing marks in some instances to activate those selected nodes. Um, the understanding some timing marks. Now I did a, a class two weeks ago or three weeks ago, I guess it was uh, on the timing marks. And that was the first webinar in, in July. Uh, and so having that, that kind of a, you know, springboard from last, you know, from three weeks ago, moving on and using the timing marks and how you can sequence with the timing marks using the state's effect, you're going to find that very interesting. I hope, hopefully uh, when we go through this, um, unlike a standard, it, it, under a, a standard graphical effect, the state's effect uh, doesn't do anything natively when you place it on any any or every model or group. Um, it, it's not like a butterfly or a single strand or anything like that. It, it doesn't have a graphical use, but it, it turns on models. So whenever you do anything with the state effect, realize that you have to spend time setting up the states and or the timing marks that you're going to be using because if you don't, it's not gonna do anything. Um, and since the state effect depends on specific models, importing effects from other sequences may not work. And there's a reason for that. Uh, how I use the state effect may be different than how you use the state effect. So uh, I've, I've considered how do I, how can I enhance my sequencing using the state effect, make it easier, more simplified. And there are ways that I can do it, but across the board, um, I would have to, teach each and every one who purchases a sequence or buys or downloads a sequence from us how to use the state effect and how they'd have to create the state in their models in order to utilize the programming that I'm uh, that I've included with the programming so uh, it, it's it, it's very dependent on the user to make these changes um, it's possible we could we could do something but it's going to be this is I think the state's effect is a, a very user defined user centric um, option for sequencing. So uh, if you're if you're producing your own work, this is something that uh, you're that you'll find useful for your own home show if you have the need. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Why would we use a state? Uh, um, why would we use a state effect? Uh, so. Uh, the, the, perf uh, the perfect use for the state effect is in the instance below. Now, uh, out of all of you in the Zoom room, and you, and if you're at home watching this recording on YouTube later on, um, you're going to you're going to see that um, there's this that wreath with here. I'll, I'll I'll point it out here. The wreath with the bow. Now, most people who see a wreath and a bow think automatically two colors, red and green. What if you were you just wanted to light your prop up red and green, and you wanted to do it really quickly and easily? Well, you can create the you can create a specific a specific state where when you place the state effect on it, it will turn the specific nodes green for the wreath and red for the, uh, red for the bow. Um, if you have the toy soldier that um, we've utilized a number of times in different uh, uh, projects across the country and, uh, and you like the colors that the, that the toy soldier has on them, you, you, many people have probably submodeled those pixels and turned them on those colors and it made it appear like the toy soldier was lit up in those specific colors. Uh, and, and then as you can see to the right here, uh, we also have like, we call it our elf monkey that um, uh, we used in a number of our projects. And we 
we use the state effect to light up the, the ball of his hat white or the, the cuffs. And this was in the middle of, of, of doing the state effect. Uh, I was working on the, the, the node definitions so that you don't, you, don't see the, you don't see the correct color on the right cuff as you do on the left cuff and so forth. But that's the idea behind uh, the state effect. It's easier to turn on and apply the on effect uh, then it, 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 it's easier to turn on than just using a bunch of on effects for all of the submodels that you've created. So that's definitely a, a number of reasons uh, to, to help you kind of come up with ideas for putting this into use for the state's effect. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to kind of go through the dialog box. Now, if you have X lights open and, and you go over to your layout tab, just select any model. Now, any model will have a functionality called states. If you look, uh, if you look at the, um, the, uh, the model data, now this happens to be a custom model, but it doesn't have to be. It could be the window frames or your icicles or your mega tree or your matrix you can create a state on any model, so it doesn't matter, but this is how you get to them. So once you select your model, you'll just click on the states effect. And when you do, you click to edit here and there's three little dots that will pop up and you'll have this icon here. And this is very easy to get to. And then you'll be able to activate the dialog box and that will open up. And just so you know, the state's effect, if you've already watched uh, some of our submodeling videos, uh, this is exactly the same kind of a setup to get you going as far as you, the same steps you would use when you get into the submodel dialog. It's also the same as you would get into to uh, set up your faces definitions on your singing props or ma your matrix or your mega tree and such. Um, What's the difference between submodels dialog versus the states dialog? Well, they look, like I said earlier, they look very, very simple, uh, or they work very simple and they look very similar. They have different end outcomes. Uh, the submodels are used for sequencing. Now, the states are used for sequencing as well, but they're different in how they output data to the prop, meaning the way that the data is converted and its usefulness. One is simple. It's easier to sequence them uh, on a sub model uh, whenever you're trying to put a basic graphical effect. But whenever you're just turning lights on for a certain state for a certain period of time, it's, it's easier just to grab the state effect, define the state. And then once you've defined the state, then, then you can go ahead and select it and enter it into those node ranges. So the states is set up like the submodels. The node ranges can be clicked and drag selected using the same method. So if you're familiar with the other information, you can, you can create a new one and you can uh, click in the box or in the node range and you can click and drag in your preview screen here and, and physically build those, uh, those, um, those node ranges or uh, select those specific pixels to create the model. Now, uh, it also has functionality, we'll, I'll show you as we go into it, for importing, and it's very helpful for that. We'll, we'll do a demo on that as well. Um, the states dialog has different settings. You can create multiple states. In other words, uh, right here it says name. I have one that's called arm here that I created, and we'll go through a demo of that. Um, but you could have arms, rings, curls, segments, whatever you want, you could have a number of these. And what that would do is give you much more options for sequencing if you have specific states or different looks that you'd like each, uh, that you'd like to portray at different times in a song. Maybe you, I don't know, maybe you want a uh, blue and white toy soldier and maybe you want a red and white toy so soldier. And that matches with your the color motif in your show. So um, you can do that. It's, it's, it, there, there's options to, to change. So if you had a uniform, uh, let's say you were doing uh, Pittsburgh Steelers uniform, that's my hometown, and maybe you're Brian McVeigh and you need the, the Kansas City Chiefs colors on your uniform for, that, that are on uh, this prop that's in your show and you wanna do something like that, you can do that. Um, so you can, assign, you can assign those specific colors for those individual states. Uh, you, you can have uh, what's called a seven segment display, a clock or a countdown option. That's an icon right there, the, a button right here. Um, 
and that force custom colors is very useful. We're going to use that tonight in the demo. Uh, and, and then if you scroll down through the whole list, you have a total of what, what appears 200 different state options. So there, it can get very, very, very complicated and very, you can dive really deep into using these, uh, the, these uh, dialogue box as far as building those states for yourself. Um, the states column, you have a column here that says states and you have a column here that says nodes. The state column is your identifier to the specific state which you want to create when you have this definition selected. So I'm going to create an arms state and I'm only going to select arms and I'm going to give each uh, of those selections a specific number. And that's gonna be what I call it on the state. And the state is what is utilized in the timing grid. And I'll show you more about that when we go into the actual demo. And every time that timing mark brings up that certain identifier, that state number, uh, it might, and since I'm using a number, but you could use words, you could use anything uh, to identify that state. And whenever that is read on the timing grid uh, from a timing mark, it will appear to turn that on and then it will change them whenever those states have different names that change with this, those timing marks. So uh, the next column is the node column. This is where you assign your pixels or your node selection. So um, uh, what, what I would say about a node is imagine a, uh, a, digit, a, 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 a three digit clock or a four digit clock, like one, two, colon zero zero that would be 12 o'clock you could create individual nodes that that are the upper and the lower and the sides and that would be a state that you could set as like a clock or a countdown timer let's say you're going 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 you could do a countdown with an outline uh, or you could create those states as well in a matrix and have those as an identifier and that would also work as well. But we have nodes or uh, we have a node set up if you're using dumb RGB or you have, uh, a, or you can assign pixels. So it's really, really flexible, a lot that you can dive into. So let's begin by going through and actually building a state. The first thing that you're going to do is once you've clicked on that three button, uh, the three period dialogue, it'll open up the state definition box. You're going to come here and click the add button and that will allow you to add in a new state definition. After you've uh, clicked it, a name box will come up. You give the state a physical name so that's something that it's gonna be recognizable or representative of the state that you're building or creating. Now, um, I don't know how many different names you can have, how many states you can build, but you can have up to uh, 400 different uh, uh, segments of that same, of that specific state name that you're creating uh, for each one of those. The next thing you're going to do is again, go to the next drop down, which is your node ranges, uh, or you, you can select single node. And single node, again, is kind of like those dumb RGBs. The node range is kind of, is exactly like what you would use in, let's say the, um, uh, the, the submodel dialog where you're using pixel one, pixel seven, pixel 14, and you're clicking and dragging. So those are the node, uh, node ranges. We're gonna, we're gonna do a demo with node ranges that will kind of show you the same thing. And then I'm going to say at this point, a huge warning because there is a bug in x -Lite at this time. And I, I don't know if anybody's turned it in. I, I didn't have a chance to do it before I, I made my webinar out tonight. So this isn't, this isn't a, an attack on any developer by any means because they, they constantly are fixing things. But when you're creating a node range state, we recommend that you, that you, that you need to click on the OK after selecting node ranges prior to creating the new state definition. Um, the reason is, is because the, the node range switches back to a single node when you reopen the dialog box and it doesn't save all of your work as a, um, as a node range, it saves it as a single node and then you have to start over again. So that's something that we learned now that, that may be fixed uh, in, in an upcoming release. So forgive me if this isn't the case anymore, but it's something that I've learned that we've all made uh, that, that mistake of, or not mistake, but we, we didn't realize that this was an issue, and, but there is a workaround. So I'm gonna show you the workaround uh, and forgive me for the next few years because I'm probably not gonna update this content after they make that fix. Um, 
but after you click OK, after you created that new state, click OK, and it will close the state's dialog, click down here and save, and then just go back in, select the state's box and reopen it again. And the reason again for that is so that whenever you reopen it, it will remember that you have a node range and, uh, or, or you wanna switch this to node range and not, uh, not the uh, single node because it will revert back to the single node. Um, so the next thing you're going to do is you can, you can import an existing submodel, which if you hover over top of the node line or the state line, you right click and what, what will happen is this import submodel. So if your model has submodels to it, it will automatically open up and read all of the submodels and you can select those submodels. We're gonna use this functionality today in the demo, but we'll also use the uh, click and drag method as well so you can see that it works. But you just simply right click, you can put a check mark beside whichever submodels you want to bring in. And what, what it will do is if you select multiple submodels, uh, it will bring those multiple submodels all in on one line. So maybe you don't want them all, maybe you want them each to have their own state. Uh, so maybe you don't want to bring them in. I'll demo this for you, kind of give you a hand. Uh, but also uh, another thing you need to do after you've uh, created a state, or if you've, if you've done the click drag thing, you want to give it a name. Um, or not a name, but a state uh, identifier. So it does need to have some sort of name here so that whenever it hits the timing mark or uh, if, you, if you have multiple uses, it, you have to, it has to have a, uh, an identifier under the state. And I called that name. It really should say identifier. So again, after you've created, this is just like uh, doing a... Um, this is just like doing a submodel. You want to click OK before, uh, don't click cancel. So if you're back on this screen here, don't ever hit the X button, don't hit cancel, hit the OK button. And once you hit OK, come back over here to your layout tab and hit the save button. When you hit the save button, uh, everything will be good. You have saved the state in there after you've completed the state. So with that, what we're going to do is we're going to demo this step in X lights. I'm going to try to move through this relatively quickly. Um, uh -oh, I lost my X lights. There's my X lights. Okay, so here we are. We've got our uh, we've got our spinner here, and we're going to go into our state uh, definition box. Now, again, we have to create a brand new state. I better keep it this small so that you guys can see it. It doesn't need to be zoomed in that much, um, but we'll go ahead and give it a name. So we'll click add and we'll call this, and as I said before, arms, and we'll click okay. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to utilize the right click method for creating a, uh, importing a submodel that's already created. And I'm going to import spoke number one here, which doesn't say one, that's just spoke. And you'll see that it brings in that first spoke for me. That's a wonderful, uh, simple thing to, to bring in. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a state number or a nomenclature of something. Uh, and I'm using numbers because we're going to tie this in with how I utilize this in my sequencing. So maybe it's something that you're learning for the first time uh, and you have a different way. That's OK as well. Now, the. Uh, the, the other way, again, to uh, create the sub or the, uh, the state definition is to click and drag. So what I can do is um, I can make this a little bigger. I can zoom in. With, if you have a scroll wheel on your mouse, this is kind of nice. You zoom in, zoom out. And if you have a clicky on your mouse wheel where you push and click, you can grab the mouse and, and move the whole field around. You can pan around. So I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to just start clicking and dragging over these nodes. Now, uh, since we're not running effects on these, it's not important to have them in any specific clickable order. I'm just creating a group. So that we'll call this state number two. Um, and if we click on onto the other state, you'll see that these nodes stay or remain highlighted. And what's nice about the fact that they're highlighted is that you know they've been selected for another state in this named or this created state here, okay? Now, I'm going to go ahead. We just created this new one, right? I'm just going to click OK. Haven't done anything hard. And um, I'm going to go back in here and open this up. And maybe they did fix it. 
maybe they did fix that bug. Look, it still says node ranges, but that's good. That's good. Um, uh, they, the default was coming out the other way, uh, but this is good. Let's go back to arms. Whoops. Oh, we changed it. See how we changed it and it erased them. And I didn't hit save down here. So that means that means we get to start over. No big deal, right? No, node ranges. We'll just go in and we'll do it the easy way. We'll import by submodel. I'll check the first one. I'll select this one, import submodel number two, import submodel number three, import submodel number four. Okay, so now you can see that I have four of them selected there. Now I can keep doing this really quick with five, six, seven, and we're gonna do this all to all of them. Eight, import nine, and you can quickly see how having those submodels really does help if you spent the time going through all of these. It really is important uh, to, to have gone through this. So we're on 11 here, 11, 12, and I believe there's 16 of these guys here. Could have picked a smaller number, but that's okay. Oops, 13, I meant 13, 13, getting ahead of myself. 13, 14, 15, and 16. So now uh, another thing that I'm gonna go through and do real quick is I'm gonna just give them all a state name and I'm going to give it one, two, three, four. Now I'm gonna repeat this pattern and you'll see why after we get to the demo in the sequence side. Uh, and some of you probably are gonna be like, oh, well, there's another way that you could have done this and you're right. There's a hundred different ways that you can set up states. Uh, there is no wrong way. Um, x gives you so many options that uh, there's multiple ways to do it. There may be easier ways. There may be uh, ways that appear harder, but as long as you get your desired result, that's what's important. So I've gone ahead, I'm gonna click okay. I'm gonna save this. Those are my states uh, for my node ranges. And I'm gonna show you this force custom color. So one of the things that you can do is you can click the force custom color button and you could say, oh, state number one, we'll make it red. State number two, we make it uh, green. State number three, we make it, let's see, pink. And state number four, we make it blue. And what we could do is we could, we could keep going down the line there with those. If, uh, if these ones would auto default to white if you don't change them. But I wanted to show you that that's an option as well. Um, and I'll just leave that like that for right now. We'll come back in and change that. I'm gonna show you a little bit more about specifically the uh, the colors in just a moment. So uh, I'll go ahead and save that for the moment. And we're going to pop back in and finish up the um, uh, the uh, different slides that I've got set up here. So uh, when we go into apply the effect, the state's effect to the sequence, uh, we're applying it to a specific model, right? So when you apply or you lay down or you select the state's effect, these are your basically some of your uh, settings that are available. So you have uh, the state definition, we have arm, uh, we have state selections, we have a state box, timing track box, and some modes and colors. We'll go kind of go through these. The state definition uh, is different states you've created. So if you have a drop down here, uh, it gives you a selection of arms. Let's say maybe it's rings, maybe it's um, something different. Maybe it's uh, on the snowflake or something, uh, or it's maybe it's um, maybe it's toy soldier uh, movement one, movement two, uh, or something to that effect. Um, this the state versus timing track radio box. So these boxes here, uh, you can't select both of them at the same time. It's either one or the other. You can place the state effect down and you can tell the state effect to select a state that you created and always display that state. Then it won't rely on the timing track. 
However, if you have something that you want to work with a timing track, you select the timing track radio box. Uh, and in this instance, I had a, uh, a timing track with this name in it, and it allowed me to select it because it was available. Uh, then, then there's a couple different modes. In, if you go in and I'll, I'll kind of I'll grab this briefly here. This is the um, this is the uh, X lights uh, um, instruction manual you can find online. You can find this by going to the uh, about section or the help section on the X lights tab and clicking on the instruction manual. And this is a whole big write up that was added in. I think it was about two years ago that talks about the state effect and gives you a little bit more uh, information that can help you along uh, with this journey that you're starting out with. Um, but we're only going to use the default mode selection. There's more in there about the modes. Uh, and then the last thing that you see is the color. And uh, we're going to uh, we're going to we're going to play with the color so you kind of see what the, each of those selections do. So um, you can see that uh, you can apply the state effect and um, if you have a timing track created with notations uh, to activate that state, if you have it activated, what it will do is it'll light that up whenever that effect reads that timing track. So in this instance, I've laid the state effect down on top of um, the spinners and notice I put it in a group. You can apply the state effect to a group and use the different render styles in order to make sure that every effect that has a state on it does work with the group level. So it doesn't have to be put on the model level, it can be done on the group level. Uh, you can, so, and in, 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 in this instance, you can see I placed the state effect on the group level and I've applied it to per model default, which is the one thing I don't have showing here. And I've uh, set the setting to timing track, 500 millisecond metronome. And you can see I have the number one there and a blank space, no, no number there whatsoever. And then a number one, and then nothing, and then a number. So anytime this effect reads the number one, it's going to activate the state that says state number one, or the name of the state that I've assigned to it. And then uh, once you've done that, all it's going to do is just going to read the timing track. It's going to look for any time it has a state name that goes with this timing track, and it will change per that timing track. It's really, really rather slick. So when we do the demo here in a second, uh, you're going to get to see that. So um, the states can be layered on top of other effects as well. So notice that I have the on effect down below and the state effect is above. So you have some layer blending that's actually going on. And it's rather cool because you can also use the layer blending box to do some uh, layer blendings whenever you have the effects activated in X lights. And let's say you just want to activate certain uh, nodes and you have something over top of them that you want to move while that state is turning or spinning or changing or moving. So that's that's another thing. That's another um, level of uh, uh, interest that you probably that you can get into whenever you're dealing with the states. So um, let's go ahead and do the demo of this in the sequencing tab inside X lights. Um, I hit the right button. There we go. So uh, let's go into the sequencer tab. Now I've created a new sequence. This is a new sequence, nothing fancy. Um, I don't know that I'm sharing with sound. Let me try that again. Uh, new share, share with sound. There we go. Um, and what you should, you should be able to hear this. If, if you could in chat, can you go ahead and put that in chat that you can hear the music, please? I'll play it for you so that you guys can hear it. So just somebody mentioned in chat if you can hear it. Okay. Thank you, Father Time. Thank you, Sherry. I Good. I just want to make sure you can hear it because it's going to make much more sense as we go through this. Now, I'm going to pull from the lesson that we did last time where we talked about timing marks and the Audacity Vampire plugins. If you haven't seen that video, go to the Pixel Pro Display's Facebook company page. And I we did a webinar on this three weeks ago. It will walk you through it. I haven't got that video up on YouTube yet, but it should be there uh, as soon as I can get to it. Uh, maybe I'll put a link up above and um, you guys can check that out. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a beat track in and you can hear very clearly that this song had a beat track. So let's go ahead and add a new timing track. 
and we're going to call we're going to look for the uh, audacity vampire plugin called bars and beats tracker beats and what this will do is it will scan the music and hopefully it'll put the beats in the right place and if i hit the play button it looks like the the beats are kind of knocked out in the right place so now i'm going to show you why it's kind of important that we had all of these kind of things set up ahead of time um, notice the numbers that have been placed in here automatically thanks to the plugin. There's a one, two, three, and a four. So what's nice is, is that if you've named, if you've taken your time and you've named your states, the number, um, okay, I can turn up the audio to medium, You'll probably hear it. Is that a little louder for you guys? That much, is that better? Let me know in the comments. Um, in any event, uh, we got, uh, we've got these numbers here and they will match exactly that one, two, three, four, right along with that beat that you're hearing. So if some of you are telecasting ahead to see kind of what's gonna happen whenever I go up here and grab the states effect, which is the letter A, B here, I'm going to place this on the group level uh, I'm going to stretch it out over a long period of time, and um, let's do that. And we've got uh, we've got our specific definition. Now, hopefully, I've got this kind of centered already. Uh, we're going to go and put per model default as the render style per model default. And now you can see this is the sub models that we imported. And there's that color. It's giving those colors those specific colors. Um, the state definition that we assigned them. So if you were looking for something that didn't move, that was static, you would select the number one, you'd create a timing mark with the number one across the entire thing, which you could do rather easy. Um, in fact, let's do that. Let's add a timing track. We'll call, we'll call it an empty timing track. Uh, we'll call this um, uh, static, right? Okay. And you can see that one, two, three, four, it's going through all of those states that are available in the state effect. But what if, what if we didn't want to do that? What if we wanted a, um, a, uh, a static on, what if we put, let's see, control, right? There we go. And we come in here and we just change this to the number one. Okay. What happens when we have the state effect selected here? and we change it to static. So now you can set one static look for your model or for your prop. And let's say you have the toy soldier and you just want the toy soldier to be on and look like a toy soldier for the entire song. This is as simple as it is to setting it up. Now, what a lot of us used to do is we'd go in and we take our sub models and we'd say, make the, make the, um, uh, make the, I don't know, the uh, arms blue, the hands skin color, make the face skin color, make the eyes light blue, make the lips red. And you'd have to go to all of those submodels and you'd have to put a solid on effect on. Now you're only putting one specific effect on. And that is absolutely, absolutely way easier just to put one specific effect in. So um, let me go in and do one more thing. With the states effect, we're going to um, we're 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 going to cheat a little bit. We're going to go in here. We're going to import submodels. It should be one, five, two, three, four, nine, one, two, three, four, thirteen, one, two, three. That's it. Okay. Let's see if that brought all of those in. So all of these extra subs, I, I, I'm just doing this so you can see the colors. Uh, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, good. That one, import subs. This one, one, two, three, four. Should have done this earlier, one, two, three, four. And then this one, import subs. It will still work. It'll just look a little bit different. Um, and this is four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There we go. And we could probably just delete these. Oops. Oops. There's also a, a, 
a dialogue here that you can. I'm just hitting the F2 button and hitting the delete key. And I'll show you why I am doing this in just a second. Okay, save. And let's go back to this and let's go back into the static mode here to beats. So you see those colors there, it's only activating those colors for that specific crop uh, for those specific states. So one, two, three, four, we added all the submodels for all four of those arms. And then if we play the music again, you can see that it's going right to the beat. So, um, as, as far as the basics of using the states effect, this is what I found like ridiculously helpful whenever I was trying to get uh, a specific look for a prop. So I utilized this function called uh, static or not function, but a timing mark called static. And I gave it a state number uh, and, and I set that state number across the, the entire length of the song. So it would turn it on and that was for, let's say, those singing faces or um, some of those, uh, like the hanging elf. That was a that was a good prop, a good uh, example to use it for. Um, there's another functionality too, and this this goes a little bit more towards um, towards the uh, faces effect. But there's functionality now that if you have uh, the face uh, the face effect set up, um, now it, you could go in obviously. Uh, obviously here and you'd have to create one, but you can also use a state as an outline. So if you have a, a model that has a significant number of outline colors, then you could set those states up ahead of time, use that with the faces effect. So that was another new addition uh, in x is that's come, become really, really powerful, really, really helpful. So not only is this good for just your models that you want to uh, have set up as far as uh, static models, but also for your singing faces that have multiple different things that you want lit up a specific way. And the faces definition doesn't have enough room for you to add them using the manual colors that you see up above here. So um, let me uh, check the questions real quick in chat. If you have any questions, go ahead, put them in chat. Um, John says, can you make multiple states uh, on at the same time? So the, the idea would be that you'd only want one state on the prop at a time so that you'd specifically select which state that you want. So, but can you put two states on? I don't know, let's see. Um, I, I, I really don't think this, so. it, it, well, we'll try, we'll try, why not? Let me, let me try putting a state effect on. And I, again, I, I don't sequence with the state effect every single day, so it's not, it's not something that is intuitive. You, it's something that you do have to play with. Um, let's see. So you can have a state one. And what if we grab another one here? We put it down here below it and we change this to state four, three. So it does look like you can layer them. You can have them kind of set up to layer. Uh, that kind of does work. So that's something interesting. And I guess that kind of answers Chad's question there, um, or uh, Chuck's question. Chadwick says the, uh, the, the state effect on faces was broke on some of the past version. He says he did check it on dot 14 and it has been repaired. So if you're using the state's effect or the states with the faces, uh, that may have acted up or not been acting correctly and that has been repaired. Um, so be advised. Um, what I want to do now is, uh, and I know I've been kind of going for about oh, 40 minutes or so, uh, I want to go ahead and bring Jackie up here. Jackie, are you around? Where's Jackie? Jackie? Let me see if I can ping him on Facebook.
Yeah, I, 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 see, I see he's on, I know he's on central time. Um, Uh, Steve Lawrence asks, would it be fair to say you won't see state, you wouldn't see state effects in a purchase sequence? Um, so Stephen, I, I would say the answer to that is a maybe, um, since it relies on the users having the exact prop with the state def defined, do you put state effects in your sequences? The answer is no, I really never did utilize them before. Um, I hadn't, I hadn't considered putting them in our sequences before. Uh, there are options now, I think, that where I, I think it could do some interesting things. But all of the models would have to, all of the models that I create would have to have those states added into the individual user models. And that would make it um, quite complicated for you to recreate them. So if you had the same model, we could create a, a certified model that you could download and they would be in there, but that would be quite a bit of work and everybody would have to kind of get acclimated to the state's effect to um, to get the full effect out of it. So. so I will add to that, Clyde, and say to Steve that although we don't use the state effects in any of our sequences, Clyde and, and the other sequencers typically do use the beats effect. And if, you're, if your prop is one, two, three, and four, or at least one, two, and three, because there's not too many two, four songs out there. So you'd either have one, two, three, or one, two, three, and four. You could always use the state effect that way and always go back to, to the beat count uh, timing track. No, that's a good point because pretty much every song I do will have a beach track in it. Um, and I, I do spend time going back through and making sure it's rather accurate because I can't stand when the timing marks are screwed up in a song. So uh, you could always go in and uh, create uh, a quick effect because, and it, you know, if you created a state with a one, two, three, four in it, such as I did tonight, you would be able to easily apply a state's effect to any one of those imported sequences because that timing marks almost always there in my sequences. Now that isn't every sequencer that does things for us. Uh, some sequencers, we have one specific sequencer who really does not use any timing marks. And so that's a, a rather interesting uh, uh, kind of switch, but all the monthly songs that we do for the, for the like the club members and stuff, will, those will be, those will have one of these timing marks that, that's called beats. It'll have bars in it every time. And then it'll have kind of an outline in it as well. So something you, you can utilize, yes. Hey, hey, Jackie's here. Hello. Well, hello there, Jackie. Welcome to our Tuesday night PPD webinar. Ah, hello, so I, so I, I just, I want to take a second and thank Jackie because he's, he's uh, offered to kind of, um, he's offered to kind of jump in and, uh, uh, give us a, uh, opportunity to, to learn some of the, the more, um, uh, the more, what, what would you say, the, the advanced uh, and props that are, because Jackie creates props that are driven with a lot of state effects usage. So if, if there's anybody who has experience with, with states, then by all means, uh, Jackie has, has done a number of different things. So I'm going to turn it over to Jackie, where he's going to show hopefully a number of uh, things, little things that he's done and give you a little bit more. And he, he's also a good resource to have as far as using the state's effect because the state's effect isn't something that is native to pretty much any, anybody. It, it, you have to set it up. So Jackie, with that, go ahead and take it away. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, well, all right. Well, I, I appreciate you having me. Um, uh, I apologize for jumping in a little late. Uh, I just had a little company come by and you know, you know how it is when you're trying to get on get away but uh I, i'm not for sure what all you cover so i'm just going to try to talk about a basic part of what states are 
and take away a myth. Um, a lot of people look at states as something that's a little too far for them to reach. And I assure you it's not. Uh, I can do it. So if I can do it, I know you guys can. Um, once you figure out what states really do and what they're capable of doing, um, it can open up a lot of sequencing for you. Now, with uh, your professional sequencers, a lot of them are not going to sequence your state. Uh, so that's more on you to do so. Uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's uh, there's a, a lot of little things that can make life easy, but you have to put in the effort up front and get it, get it done. A state is a simply a change, right? So what's it in? Is it on? Is it off? Is it red? Is it white? Is it black? You know, so we have a lot of uh, things that you can do with a state. You just have to kind of let your imagination uh, get get some things going. Now, the reason why I got into this is because uh, quite a while back, you had a lot of wireframes that have motion. Uh, whether it was simple motion like a marching band or something hitting a, a drum or something of the sort, uh, you had that, and it was really, really neat. Uh, it added animation to a prop that just there normally. So you look at uh, a lot of your frames, such as elves throwing, throwing uh, presents across a road or a snowball or anything like that. That can be done with submodels or it can be done with states. And with the advancement of what Keith Wesley and Scott has done, uh, I'm sure there's been other ones, but those those two especially have done a lot to advance what states can do and submodels and that sort of thing. Uh, so he was touching on the automation of the uh, beach track. If you hit, hit uh, bring in a beach track, uh, like Daryl was saying in chat, one, two, three, four comes in automatically. And when it does, uh, you can assign a one, two, three, four to a prop and have it go through the motion. And, uh, and, and that one, two, three, four will give you up to four motions, but you can repeat motions. Like for instance, on the bat, you have an up and down. Well, you have a one, two, and then you just repeat it three and four. So that way you have a, a default that will work with you and you don't have to do a whole lot of extra stuff. I'm going to work on getting my X lights up and running and hopefully I can show you a few uh, use case scenarios here. It may take me just a second to get it up and running. Uh, but in the meantime, is there any specific questions that anybody has until we get, get going? Well, if you un, unmute if you'd like for a second until I can get my stuff going. Let, let me see. I think there was something in here. Um, uh, no, I, uh, Orlean, oh, Orlean. Uh, mentioned he said I stepped away for a moment so forgive me if I repeat the question if a song contains a uh, 1000 beats do I have to label each beat manually um, if you're using if you're using the uh, audacity vampire plugin it will the, the bars and beats tracker will automatically uh, create that for you I can demo that for you um, or Jack you could try uh, that should be rather yeah, easy I, to could, do. I can probably do that yeah either one uh, I'll, I'll try to work on that as I go, and it'll be kind of from scratch since I'm just now opening up lights, and that way you can see it. Uh, one caveat, you do have to have the uh, Queen Mary Vamp uh, plug-in. It has to be there uh, so that you can uh, get through that and bring in a beach track. And like I said, at default, it will be one, two, three, four, and it'll be repetitive. So uh, that we can use to our advantage. Uh, so... <laughs> When you go to a prop and you highlight it and come over to the model's property, uh, you have your your different th things here, phase dimming curve, states, submodels. A lot of people skip sober states, but here it is. We'll go into it and I'll show you what I have here. Uh, you can create as many as you want. Uh, right now, I just have this one showing here. This is not the model that uh, I use in a lot of cases, but uh, this is just what I happen to have right here. 
the uh, they have opened this up so you can do at least 200 on one state definition. If you feel that they're doing really, really good. Jackie, in ju the process, Jackie, just so you're aware, I've already kind of walked through the basics on this screen. What okay. what will be interesting is the way that you've named the state of each of your colors and why you chose black. Uh, oh, that it. will be helpful. Um, okay. So because we we actually did go in and we've uh, we've built a, a simple or basic one with just four four numbers that were states called one through one through four and we had four different states that we used yeah. to to a tie to the beat track so that's okay. kind of you can you can kind of pick it up from there okay good good so you got that's got a handle on what this is how it works and, and and where you do so this is where your imagination is going to come into play um brown is a very difficult color so i just use orange instead uh, with with this pro, let me let me get out of here for just a second, and I will. Why can't I x out of that? Oh, well, that got me blocked in for some reason. Uh, so I'm going to go to the faces real quick, and there's a reason why I'm going to start on faces. I want you to understand that states and faces are very close to each other in the sense that. If you have a lyrics track, mouth AI is going to make the shape. And then if you have a state track, what you call is going to make that shape. So it's really very similar in the sense of that. With this model here, I'm going to go ahead and maximize it. You'll see that I have uh, a, a defined shape already using the faces. So it comes in with his, with his wing wide open. Uh, it also has eyes and a mouth. Now, that's good for a stationary position. But if I want to make him flap, that's where the states come in. You could do this with, with submodels. But when you do that with submodels, you have to go in and repeat a pattern over and over and over. And with the beat track, you can do this automatically, and it makes it, makes it pretty easy. Back to the states. I'll show you what I have. Uh, if you can see the entire model would be a little bit different, but you can't quite make out these purple areas right here are some of the things that has been chosen on some other other stuff. Like for instance, here we have it brown. Uh, and then here we have black. What you don't see that is black is this area here. Let me change the color so you can kind of get an idea. Let's we'll change it to a funky green, give you an idea of what's going on. So with the Face effect in, in play, you have the upper wings, you have the body, the eyes, and the mouth all there. But if you were to come in and create this lower portion here, uh, right here, then this part here would still be showing and it, it wouldn't look right. So in the process, we want to get rid of the active uh, parts of this wing. And to do that, we just color it black. Black is actually a, a, uh, a good use case scenario for a, for a lot of things. And I have one, two, so I could go in and modify one, two and, and do that. But I, I wanted to show you, we can name it flap and we can put as many of these as we want. And with, when you do a flap in your state effect, uh, all of them will come in at the same time. So if you try to do uh, cover up another part of it or, or turn on a different part that's already turned off with another section, can get a little little tricky, but you just make sure that you you don't do that. You have some that are off, some that are, and we're going to repeat this pattern over and over and over again. And with this one, uh, the flap only goes down. Uh, and with one, two, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go, go down and I'm going to go up. So I'm going to go back and forth and you'll see that it's going up and down. And I'm just repeating this pattern um, and, it, and it changes back and forth. Uh, with, with that being said, how it works is when you throw an on effect, have it completely on and you have one, two, three, four running, it's going to turn on and off each wing in the order in which it comes in. Now, 
this one is not completely set. So what I'm going to do is show you how to do that when you only have two motions. And then I'm going to go into the teddy bear and show you how to do multiple motions uh, with that. Uh, the uh, the one, two is easy enough to do is we'll go here, click twice slowly, and you can copy this by control C or right clicking. Come down into another zone, and if you want to keep it in order, that would probably be better. But for this purpose, I'm going to control V, and I am going to turn this double click and turn that black. And I'm going to name this three. And then I'm going to copy this one, control C, control V, double click, black, and I'm going to change that to four. Uh, what we have here is a repetitive pattern. One, two, three, four. There's only two motions here, so we can either create a beats track that only has two beats, or we can use the default and go ahead and get it done here. Go ahead and, and create the one, two, three, four pattern so that you don't have to fight that every time you do a beats track, and this will uh, fix you up. Make sure you hit OK and save. And if you go to the sequencer, uh, I'm going to try a new sequence. I have no idea what I have on this computer. So uh, this is the first thing I see. So what I have now, I have audio track and I'm going to right click, add timing track. Uh, I want to come in and do the beats. So right here, beats. Uh, and I, when I click that, hit OK. I can give it a name. And I want, you want to name it something that makes sense to you. So I'm going to name it bat. Hit OK, and it's going to process it. And it only processes it if you have the Queen Mary plugin installed. Um, and once you once you do that, you have another timing uh, mark here. I'm going to zoom in. I'll hold my Control key and roll my mouse in. You'll see that that, that is there. One, two, three, four. It actually started on two. But... It really doesn't matter. So I have a two, three, four, one, two, three. And this is a repetitive pattern for the entirety of the of the sequence. I'm going to put an on effect onto the bat. Turn the beat, the little radio button, click right in the middle. Control shift, left arrow, control shift, right arrow to fill this entire sequence up. I'm going to select orange so that it matches my states. And I have an orange bat here. This has to be done in order. I'm going to create a, a layer above. And if you'll, you'll pay attention here because your render order is very, very important. Uh, if you put a state effect below the on effect here, then it's not going to show properly. What it will show is, is you having uh, uh, the, all this open and the states really just won't do you any. I'm going to drop the states here. I'm not going to put it for the uh, the whole thing, but I am going to just show you how to, how to run through it. Uh, right now, it's on state. Just like with a face, you can pick a particular phoneme. Uh, this, you can pick a particular, uh, a particular state. But if you want to do a track, you can actually point to the track and pick it up. And as it goes, it's going to alternate between that's one, two, three, four, one, three, four, one, two, three, four. Uh, one of the caveats here is you'll notice that I am stopped in the middle of that one, and you'll see that it kind of flickers there just a second. So what I'd want to do is stop it really close or right ahead of a transition. Since this started on two, uh, I'll get it back here close to the two, get it here. And now there should be a smooth rotation here. And if I wanted it to stop there, it could. So the next part of uh, this whole thing is I can go through and set these just however I want to. And this one, I can go to a state and leave it at one uh, if I wanted to. That way it stays open all the time. Uh, then the name that I want to do, uh, do it flapping in you know, like a different part of the home. Then I can come back, choose timing, and let it run. Uh, uh, one thing that I do that may be interesting to you, if I have two bats, I will go in and reverse the, the order here. 
So you can change this one to two, this one to one, this one to four, and this one to three. And what will happen is you'll have one bat flying up while the other one's flying down, and you'll you'll have an alternating flying pattern and they won't be running together. So that's that's an option for you to do that. There's a lot of information with uh, with states. Uh, probably won't go over everything right off the bat because I know we're kind of looking at, at time constraints, but uh, I will definitely stay on and answer any questions that we have. Um, I want to go into a different prop. <clears throat> And let's see if I can, here we go. So here's, here's the teddy bear. Go into the states on it, and you'll, you'll notice that you're, you're going to see a couple different things with this teddy bear that is uh, a little different than normal. Uh, with the teddy bear, I have a lot of things that can move. I have the, the eyebrows. I have the eyes. Uh, I have the arms. So you can, you can get a lot of motion. So with this one, there is the brows, so we can affect them. Same case scenario with the face effect. I already have a set of the eyebrows that are actually highlighted or, or that are on. And so I want to black out those and make sure they're not active whenever I turn on a different set. So you'll see that they, they kind of work through. Uh, you'll notice that I have angry. And what I'm doing with angry in this case I'm actually blacking out part of the eyes too to give it more of a uh, an angle on the eyes. So don't don't let one thing kind of block you in. Uh, you can do a lot of different stuff. Uh, just eyebrows making it angry, whatever. Sad. I do the same thing. I will actually take out this part here and then take out all of the rest of the eyebrows and then uh, bring in the part that I want. Uh, Name it whatever makes sense to you. So I've got spot left and spot right where he raises one eyebrow and back. Uh, so that's just for the eyebrows. Now I can do, I can show you all this other stuff. Now, the arms, they're only black. And the reason why they're only black is because in the, um, the outline of the teddy bear, every single arm is active. So what I want to do is be able to turn off every position and give the different angles that I want by only turning it off. Um, the alternative to that is that you can have another layer of arms or mid or up or left mid that has the color that you want and black out the lower arms, upper arms, whatever you need to black out and just turn on the, uh, the affected arms that you want. Uh, now, with that being said, I want to go from motion. Uh, Clyde, have you talked about outlines at all? Um, I, I haven't talked about outlines, but I've talked about uh, considering uh, static uh, as a way to have something on the whole time, meaning uh, make one timing mark for the entire length of the sequence, and I call it static, and I set a uh, an outline will say to, to a specific color and it's always on or it's on the whole way through the song and it never changes. So that would be a static set for what I would, would say. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's a, uh, there's a lot of things that you can do with, with this, this particular prop. Now, this, this is not the case all props, but I have um, uh, outlines designed and I, I want to go through that because it's a very good use case for states. I'm going to show you this blue bow here. Um, you'll see that I have uh, all my colors are, are here, except for what is affected in the face. Okay. When you're doing what I'm doing here for use outline, for a uh, face outline, you create that. Um, don't, don't use eyes and don't do the mouth because that's all in the face. You only want to create your outlines. Uh, keep that in mind. And you can name them separate stuff uh, so that you can color them different ways. And you can you can do as much as you want to get that. Uh, I just want to quickly show you the different op options and the purpose of it is so that you can quickly choose different different things. Like for instance, I have a polar bear that I have set up. <clears throat> excuse me. And I have 
one with a pacifier in its mouth. So there, there's a lot of different ways to do this, but you can get into uh, you can get into a situation where you have so much that it can get a little distracting. Uh, but I want to show you how to use those those states as outlines real quick so that it can make more sense what I'm doing. Uh, I'll go back to the sequencer, find my teddy bear. Uh, let's see where it's at. <clears throat> Here we go, Teddy 2. Uh, I'm going to drop a face effect on there. And you'll you'll see over here, if you go from top to bottom, be systematic, it helps. Um, phoneme, I'm just going to leave it on AI. You can choose what you want. Uh, put it on a lyric track if I have one, but in this case, I don't have one. Uh, one one thing that I have noticed with x Lights is that if you don't choose the actual timing track uh, and just click it, the automatic blinking will still work. Uh, so sometimes it, you can leave it on phoneme and it will it will blink. Sometimes it won't. So uh, you, could, you could do that if you needed to. But we'll come down here. We got Teddy as the face definition. The eyes are on auto. We're going to show the line. And if you'll notice, nothing happened when I did that because I'm going to use state as outline, drop it down, and pick the correct one. I'm going to select for this one, this is the way I designed mine, the Teddy Redbow Static, uh, and that colors it in. So you with with the face definition, you can kind of cheat and get about four colors uh, using the uh, eyes two and eyes three. But with the states, you, you're not limited. You can do up to 200 different lines. So, I mean, if you were so inclined to use that many colors, you could. So you could create gradient and really get more of a 3D effect out of it if you wanted to. With this teddy bear, I have like a little bit of a pink in the middle, a little bit darker on the back of the bow, that sort of thing to kind of give it a little depth. Uh, but if you're going to do that, do it with a prop in front of you so you can see what the colors actually look like. Uh, but this is how you use the, the show out, outline and use the states. So if I wanted blue bow, I would use him. Now, the only one I have set up right now that has as the uh, uh, static is the rail right here. And that's just if you don't want him sitting there, kind of like what Clive was talking about. Uh, you create a static setup. Now, if I wanted to do this a little bit differently, I'm just going to delete this out of the way for right now. Any prop you want to do this on, any prop at all, doesn't matter what it is, you create the layout, uh, the colors like you want. You come in and you drop it on there as long as you have the states set up uh, and choose which one you want. Uh, so I'm going to choose the bow static. It's not going to show the face because it's not defined. But let's say that you had a, uh, a Boscoyo nutcracker or something of the sort, and you wanted to color every part of it, and you just wanted it to stand there and look, look really good. Well, create it with dates, drop the date on there, uh, choose all. Right, because every face definition has each one. So if I select one in particular, it's going to be uh, those particular parts. So you, you want to make sure you select all. Any questions on that before I move on to anything else? Um. Is it Daryl? No, I'm sorry. Um, David David R is asking, want to go over the use of the timing marks with the one, two, three, four used, not using a beat. And I'm not, not sure. Using a beat. Okay. It, I, I think I know uh, a good scenario. He wants to use the timing. All right. So uh, let's see. Uh, microphone's about to run out. I'm going to have to switch over to my. Uh, my computer audio here in a second. See if this thing can come up. Yeah. I'm not on the right one. Let me stop share for just a second to find the correct uh, file that I need to use. 
and I will create a uh, the, the right one for you guys and I'll be able to show you how to do that. So states are actually really cool though. I mean, there's no hardly any limitation to it. The difference between a state and a sub model is that sub models have direction and layers, whereas states are just the entire part of the prop on or off. Uh, so you keep that in mind. Well, if you want something to have a certain direction, then then the sub model is gonna be the way to go. Uh, states, states in effect in itself whereas a sub-model uh, will actually uh, take effects. So there's a little bit of a difference. Yeah, that we, um, I, I, I started making that, uh, that uh, I had a slide set up for PowerPoint that, that kind of described that. So it was, um, okay. so that it was kind of apparent, but um, that, that I'll tell you, the, the nice thing is, is that uh, the developers have really worked hard to, uh, and I know Scott did a lot of it too as well. Um, make the the look and feel be so similar that you intuitively knew one if you'd never used the other before. And it was easy to it's it's really easy to go in and create those states. Yeah, I mean the the states you kind of need to know what you want to accomplish, right? And you want to make sure that uh, and, and you may have to do it two or three times to get it right uh, the first time you do it you may pick the wrong pixels or you may have overlap you know from black and the other colors or whatever you want to do or, or you're going off of what you're seeing on the screen versus what you actually see in real life and you realize all oh, that pixel needs to be changed it shouldn't be in that uh definition it should be in the other definition right right and and you and don't know that until you physically have it in front of you sometimes sometimes the model is phenomenal and you can just do that but other times it's not quite as clear cut the same thing can be said though exactly about the faces definition sometimes you think where the pixel is it really isn't there it's another one so you need to go back and make your adjustments to it and sometimes you get started on it and realize what you're doing just good so you just start over yep, you're like no nope, got to start over thing, yep. yeah yeah that's a good thing about x lights they don't cost you any money whenever you uh when you mess up like that just time, just the time. Yeah, that's right. Uh, well, you know what though? I mean, let's face it. Anything that we do with inside X lights is always going to be time consuming. It, you would be a fool to think that you could, you could just pick up X lights and just start using it and never know anything about it. And you're going to intuitive, intuitively know everything about it. Everything inside X lights is as intuitive as it can be. It probably could be improved upon, but that would take a significant number more developers that are dedicated to doing it full time. So for what it is and what it does, it, I mean, it does phenomenal. It does better than almost uh, than most any other lighting software for the uses that we're using it for. That's an opinion, and, I and guess. The, <laughs> the thing about it is, is that the more that a person can do to a model for their self, the more uh, customizing they are doing to their own show, the more that they're making a the show theirs, because it's just like taking one of PPD sequences, right? You're only going to in so many of the effects for your props, uh, but tweaking those props to fit your show a little bit better, or even deleting certain amount of effects to give uh, uh, an up and down feel to, to your, your show, uh, helps optimize it to you. Same thing with these props. If you go in and modify those props and even create sub models that fit you and even create states that make animation happen a little bit, or if you want to know where they're looking pretty, you can use the states the same way. So, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, there, there's so many things that you can do. Uh, and make your show a, a lot, lot better. So I'm, right. I'm trying to re-download my model and I'll get it back up and running. Okay, I, I, I took a pause on the recording. So we're still live out okay. there in Facebook land. Everybody, if you're out there in Facebook, uh, I don't I don't see the, the all the groups and, and, and such. That, but if you haven't jumped in here, um, by all means, go to pixelprodisplays.com and then head over, click on the uh, learning tab and click on the PPD Zoom webinars. The, the password or Zoom room is PPD, lowercase, and it's easy to jump in here. Um, 
when we're done tonight, the, the live discussion afterwards is not recorded and it also is not telecast over Facebook so nobody's live because what ends up happening is uh, a number of people don't care to have their question aired out for everybody to hear so if we do it here in the room more people are likely to ask questions or use the chat at the very least where we can uh, respond all right I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and share unless somebody